I bring greetings from Adventist World Radio. My name is Tom Kingsbury, and I'm an Ad AWR ambassador for the Arizona Conference area. And I thank you for your kind invitation to share these amazing stories with you. But before I begin this message and the AWR message, I want to be emphatic that Jesus must be given all the praise, honor, and glory. And that's just what we sang about. Isn't that wonderful? I want him to get all the glory for anything that we represent. Let us enter into this service with humility and reverence. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, once again, we lift up our hearts to you. We want you to receive all the praise, honor, and glory for anything that we think, say, or do. We submit and surrender ourselves to you for your honor and glory is our prayer in this holy and precious name of Jesus. We ask these things. Amen. Amen. The title of our sermon today is called, Our God is Able. Amen. Amen. Today, I want to tell you some incredible stories of God's grace and his miracles. How people from many walks of life are being reached with the good news of salvation because God is able to save to the uttermost. People are so precious and need to be hear the news that God loves them deeply and that he's made a way of salvation for, possible for them. Inspiration says this about how much God loves his people as we read. Nothing in any way concerns our peace is too small for him to notice. There is no chapter in our experience too dark for him to read. There is no perplexity too difficult for him to unravel. The relations between God and each soul are as distinct and full as though they were not, there were not another soul upon the earth to share his watch care. Isn't that incredible? Not another soul for whom he gave his beloved son. That's out of Steps to Christ, page 99 and 100, condensed. This is how much he loves each one of us. He wants nothing more than to save his precious children from a life of misery, to a life of eternal joy. John 10.10 10 assures us that. The thief cometh not but to steal and to kill and to destroy. And I am come that they might have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Isn't that a beautiful promise? Our God is able to bring us lasting joy. In our desperate health problems, he is there. And he is there to heal, whether on this earth or on the resurrection morning, because God is able. He tells us this, fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Isn't that another beautiful promise? God is giving us promises to build our faith. If we need his wisdom, he is there, leading and guiding us to, tr to this truth. God promises, if any of you lacks wisdom, you shall ask God, and who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you, James 1, 5. And he follows this pro that promise with this promise. How be it? When he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. Isn't that beautiful again? When we have questions that burn a hole in our soul, he has answers just like he did for Nicodemus. God promises, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. Jeremiah 29, 13. And you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. 
John 8:32. In our deepest pain, he is there with this promise. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Isn't that a beautiful promise? Especially if you've lost loved ones. God is the answer to our deepest needs and the problems of this world. Today, I can't wait to tell you about what God is doing around the world. What he has done is so amazing and so incredible that his power is clearly unlimited. The psalmist said this about our great God. He determines the number of the stars and he calls them each by name. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. His understanding has no limit. Psalms 147, verses 4 and 5. AWR broadcasts in more than 1,000 stations worldwide in more than 100 languages. We also broadcast via shortwave in about 75 languages. Let us look at one of our own unique languages right here in the Arizona on the Navajo Nation. PUC granted us $25,000 to pilot this project back in 2020. This is my friend Sam Hubbard. I used to teach with Sam up at Holbrook Indian School. He's a, just a neat guy. And his friend Bob, uh, Joe, uh, Bud Joe Haycock. And they are preparing inspiring AWR messages at the Holbrook Indian School studio to be broadcast on KTNN radio. They are members of several native speaking teams who are providing 30 minute spot scripts on in Navajo and English and their messages are broadcast on KTNN radio. That's the Navajo Nation official radio station each Sunday morning across the nation. Isn't that beautiful? Here's a, a friend of mine. I took that. That was my display in the, uh, during the training session. This is my friend Kai Jones. He's a youth speaker. And here he is standing by the display. Just the neatest young man. And he was at the training session. I just enjoyed that so much. And these are the training such. Uh, Graduates. This was done in May of 2021. And that's the All Nations Church, by the way, in Gallup, New Mexico. From this small island of Guam, we can reach over one third of the world with shortwave radio. Isn't that incredible? AWR is very focused and also passionate about spreading the gospel to the world so that many people will be saved when Jesus comes. This includes particularly hard and almost impossible regions of the world where missionaries cannot go. We are truly amazed as we are seeing thousands upon thousands of seekers coming to Christ through this radio ministry. AWR asked themselves this question, what else could we do to reach even more people around the world? So we decided to establish a center for digital evangelism in the Philippines, where young people could come and give a life of missionary service. They could come and provide answers for people's Bible questions, praying for them and inviting them to online studies. Eventually, our CDE missionaries also connect them to their local church for further follow-up and for baptism and for fellowship. Last year, the CDE worked with contacts from 211 countries. That's a lot. Suicides were averted. People found Jesus as their personal Savior and Lord. People participated in Bible studies and decisions have been made to follow Jesus in baptism. In October of last year, we dedicated the new Center for Digital Evangelism offices, which are part of the Hope Center in the Philippines on the campus of the Southern Pacific Asian Division. We currently have 23 missionaries there, but soon we'll have nearly 50. Isn't that beautiful? I love to see those pictures. If you know of a young person ages 18 through 35 who is single and would like to give a year of their life in mission service, 
have them fill out an application to join us at the CDE in the Philippines. They would go on to our website, and you'll see it in green there, awr.org forward slash missionary to apply. They can join an army of youth who will reach some of the most unlikely, neglected, or hard to reach people who are searching for answers. They will learn technical, creative ministry skills to lead people from broadcast to baptism. Let me tell you about God Pods. These are little solar powered, pre recorded audio players about the size of a garage door opener, onto which we load the complete Bible, sermons, spirit of prophecy writings, health programs, songs, and more in the recipient's language. That's the key. To charge them, you just have to lay them out in the sun. We use them especially in remote villages where there is no electricity or radio signal or for people who cannot read. By March of this year, we have sent out over 10,000 of these with and more are being, thousands more are being processed. They have gone to South Africa, Sri Lanka, Democratic Republic of the Congo, Chad, Namibia, Philippines, Honduras, and the Navajo Nation right here in Arizona. Isn't that wonderful? Currently, we are preparing for uh, uh, a whole batch of these, almost 4,000 are being prepared for Afghanistan. Oh, yes. Our podcasts are available on iTunes, Amazon, Spotify, and they contain evangelistic messages, programs about health and practical Christian living. And we've had over 9.2 million downloads in, two, in 2021. Isn't that a big number? 9.2 million downloads. That's incredible. But this is up 3.4 million from the year before. A new podcast is op uploaded every 15 minutes, and we have programs in over 120 languages. Just incredible. All as missionaries, thousands have signed up to be cell phone evangelists, reaching out to many people. This work involves sending out Rate audio evangelistic presentations to friends and family who perhaps do not know the truths of the Bible, as well as it adverti it's advertising for new interests. Being their friend, you, and you're answering their questions and mentoring people, they're mentoring into a relationship with Jesus. In one, it is one of life's greatest joys when you see people understanding and coming to Jesus. That's beautiful. Many, many people have been baptized as a result of cell phone evangelism. Our God is able. Can you read the scripture reading with me out loud? Let's read this together. And I added one last closing verse. Ephesians 3 verses 20 and 21. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages. Isn't that a beautiful closing prayer? And it closes with amen, doesn't it? We are also excited to tell you about our team who has just finished setting up a 24-7 internet radio station in Pretoria, South Africa. We are also working to start an internet station from our office in Maryland to broadcast 24 hours a day again, seven days a week, online. What a goal. Also in Liberia, we recently received word from our ADO, AWR radio producer that a large Pentecostal church has contacted our station to say that have, they have been listening to the AWR messages and the entire church wants to be baptized because become Seventh-day Adventists. Amen. Actually, what they're planning to do is remove their church, church sign and put up a Seventh-day Adventist church sign that has been, and that has recently happened. Isn't it wonderful? People are responding. They are responding through the Holy Spirit's guiding hand. Our radio team has has now held an evangelistic meetings there. This is in Liberia. 
and they are helping to prepare them for baptism. The lady in the middle, and you can see her there, she is doing most of the preaching and working one-on-one -on -one with the members. My friends, this is happening in so many parts of the world. Many countries in Africa, Papua New Guinea, India, the Philippines, it's incredible. And I believe God is wrapping up his work because he is coming soon. Amen. Amen. We receive stories almost daily from Uganda of lives being changed as a result of, God's, of God using AWR to reach people. In Uganda, Africa, from April through June of 2021, over 5,000 people were baptized as a result of the radio broadcast. We received an updated report that there had been thousands of additional baptisms since then. And you see these speakers in, in Ghana using the FM radio coupled with the marketplace speakers, we began to broadcast into the busy marketplace. As a result, 2,500 people were baptized in the last quarter of 2020 and nearly 4,000 in the, in the early 2021 totaling nearly 6,500 uh, <laughs> people. Praise the Lord. Would you like to see what the marketplace looks like? There it is. Here it is. Can you imagine this many people shopping at one time? That's, that, that's a challenge, but it's also a blessing. Here is a lady. She's selling food in the market in Ghana. Everyone is able to listen to the good news as they shop. Isn't that wonderful? Now, let's go to a colder climate as we look at God's world. Here we land in the country of Ukraine. This is very sobering. We have so many stories of what is going on in Ukraine, but here are two of them. We created a new Bible course called In the Beginning about the book of Genesis in just one month. More than 700 people signed up for this study. They are now working their way through an introductory course and many will continue on with additional courses. Did I lose something here? Uh-huh. Oh boy. <laughs> I'm on slide 40. <laughs> I don't see that. Bob, you can come down here. I'll, I'll be glad to have you help me. Thank you. Thank you from Microsoft. Here's another story. Appreciate this. Mr. B and his wife were listening to the radio and happened upon an AWR shortwave broadcast targeted toward Iran. He and his wife were deeply stirred by what they heard. They sent an email to the producers and for six months they emailed back and forth with questions and answers. Then they began to share with those around them. Soon a group of 40 people began to gather. One day an invitation was given to, uh, to visit a pastor, yes, a pastor yes, in Tajikistan, where they were baptized. As far as we know, they are the only native speaking baptized Seventh-day Adventist Afghanis living in Afghanistan. The only two that we know of. But the story does not end there. This is not the end of God's amazing providence in Afghanistan. Let me tell you about Mr. and Mrs. Omar. Mr. Omar had a dream. He was in a dark place, but he saw a light shining. Then he heard a voice telling him to come out of the darkness into the light. He did not understand the dream, so he asked his wife what the dream could mean. She did not know. Then he asked his father if he knew what the dream meant, and he said, yes. You see... 
the Father is the Mr. B that we told you about in the last slide. He just, as we just talked about, isn't that wonderful? They have to be very careful how they share the message in Afghanistan. In a very difficult country, a group of Sabbath keepers are meeting despite death threats. Given the security issues, they can no longer meet as a larger group, but they are meeting in groups of two or three people to worship God. Please pray for their safety and their witness for, for Jesus. My friends, time is short. Listen to these sobering words. Now more than ever, it's time that we as Christians become strong in the Lord. We need to have a close relation, connection with Him that nothing can shake us. The Lord calls for soldiers who will not fail, but, nor be discouraged, but who will accept the work, and even though they will face hardships. Again, it's, it's happening. For the rest of our time together, I want to focus on an amazing story. AWR has witnessed the most amazing miracle. Something that has never happened before in this world as far as we know. This happened in the island of Mindoro, Philippines. A 55, uh, 50, excuse me, 52 year old war between a communist terrorist organization called the New People's Army or NPA and the Philippine military. That's what been, they've been fighting. Over 40,000 people have died in this conflict. The government has tried everything they knew to stop this war, but to no avail. God had a way, though. About five years ago, AWR began broadcasting across the island, and even these rebels living high up in the mountains began listening. While some of you may remember this story, and I hope you do, I'll give a brief review of how it happened. Robert DeLay was con contacted by the rebels, and he was asked to come and preach to them in the mountains. Their leader, Ephraim, and others responded by taking Bible studies and being baptized. The new believers, uh, the new believers, which were former rebels, were given video projectors and sermons and sent back into the mountains to share with their former comrades. Over the last several years, many rebels have surrendered to the government and have been given amnesty. AWR brokered the peace between the former rebels and the Philippine government through the Holy Spirit. Here is a clip of one of those reconciliation meetings. I'm happy to report that now almost all of these rebels in Mindoro have left the NPA, laid down their machine guns in exchange for the Bible. Over 1,400 former rebels have been baptized. Amen. Elder Ted Wilson baptized the head rebel general back in November 13 last year. Amazing. There are only 17 remaining rebels who have not surrendered by late November 2021. And I'll just talk over this. This is a this is a voiceover. But they have since asked for Bible studies they are studying for baptism. There were only 17 remaining rebels. And they have been studying. And here they are. This is what it looks like. This is how they're, they're coming forward. And they have on their shirts, I will go. 700 of them were baptized in in November, and each one had that little logo, I will go. And here you see the governor, the head general, and the mayor. And this is a very important meeting, and you'll see why. They are being given certificates of amnesty. No government that we know of has ever done this. You see how they're... Thank you, that's AWR 360 salute. And I want to call your attention to these two ladies. One's a rebel general. One's a Philippine army general. They have been shooting each other's families for their whole lives. It's been a 52 year war. Can you imagine that? Can you see sisters in Christ embracing now? The, the angst is gone. The 
they're just, they're crying. They are so glad to be reconciled again. We don't know if this is ever happening anywhere in the world before. That's a governor. He's signing off. It's a very public, very, very large poster that they're signing. And here's the general. He's putting his name to that document. Praise the Lord. That is so touching. I just can't. Greetings, my friends. I'm Dr. Dwayne McKee, president of Adventist World Radio. It's so exciting to be alive. You cannot believe what's happening right here in Mindoro in the Philippines. Thrilling, exciting things are happening. It's unbelievable. We see all kinds of people come out of the mountains and they have learned about Jesus during the last four or five years. And now they're all being baptized. It is so exciting. 10,000 others have been baptized before. And now thousands, maybe 3,000 that they were expecting. Beyond belief. What an opportunity to see the power of God at work. This is absolutely amazing. Months and months of planning, special endeavors to try and reach those who have been rebels and are now former rebels, new creatures in Jesus Christ. What a great opportunity that Adventist World Radio has had in sending the truth through the airwaves to remote places it has been listened to and hearts have been melted through the power of the Holy Spirit. Today is the culmination of so many months and even years of planning and very dedicated soul winning work. To see these people being baptized, new people in Christ, and joining the Seventh-day Adventist Church to become part of God's remnant people. We praise God for the airwaves, of AWR for the tireless working of those who are here on the ground giving Bible studies and instructing for the wonderful support from the various levels of the organization in the Philippines and the Southern Asia Pacific Division. I just want to say my heart is full. I am so excited and more than that heaven is rejoicing. Sometimes around the world, and you folks know this, in some areas of the world, when we have large baptisms, people think, well, how are we going to keep helping them? And especially in a situation like this, when many of them have been in rebellion for huh, 50 years, 40,000 people have died. So as they give their hearts to Jesus and are baptized, they have been making their living through extortion. They've been making their living you know, by being hit people and, and taking out people and shooting them. We have it, unbelievable stories. Anyway, now, when they give their hearts to Jesus and they turn in their machine guns, how are they going to survive? Well, we have good news. There is an ASI ministry called Farm Stew. Jory Kaufman has contacted me. We work together. They are working now with Robert Dulé and others here in the mountains. We're going to teach the people in the mountains how to be business people, how to raise gardens, how to raise crops. The government is giving them two acres of a land, a hectare. It's thrilling that we can come here and help them become self-sustaining so they won't have to take their guns and shoot people to earn money. But now they can actually be productive citizens of the country. And the government here, the military, are so excited. You know, they have tried. They have tried. The, the, actually, the, the chief of police told us a couple of days ago, he said, we have tried. We've tried to bribe them. <laughs> we tried to say, we'll give you we'll give you so much money a, minute, a month if you'll stop killing people. <laughs> we, we'd, we'll do all kinds of things. They were not interested. But when they heard Adventist World Radio, when they heard the good news that Jesus is coming again, they laid down their arms and they were baptized. Isn't that incredible? What better gift can you give than connecting someone to Christ our Savior? That's a real gift. Isn't that incredible? They're being drawn back into society. Now they have an opportunity to make a living. And I thought that was just so, so important to let you know how they are being integrated back into society. And I want to report that the head of the the head general of the Philippine army, you see, it's not just rebels that are being baptized. The head general of the Philippine army is now also now planning to be baptized at the general conference session this year held in St. Louis. It's just amazing. These former rebels, as well as army personnel, 
are so grateful to have learned about Jesus and have a new life in Christ. They have joy and peace. Out of the gratitude of their hearts, they plan, these rebels plan a surprise tribute to our AWR team that Saturday night out around the swimming pool where they had been baptized, what you saw in the movie. Each tribe of people took time to say thank you and to even write a special song. At the conclusion of the program, they encircled the pool and lit candles to symbolize that they were committing each one to reach one. More soul for Christ by the end of 2021. Remember, that was in November. They had like six weeks. And you know what? They succeeded. Each one won at least one. It's just incredible. They are planning to hold their own evangelistic campaigns which they themselves initiated, and they did this between December 19 through the Christmas holiday in 2021. I want to show you a little clip of their tribute program. Again, it'll be a, a voiceover. This story is truly incredible. It's unheard of, but it shows the power of the gospel. You see these people? Our God is an all-powerful God. Nothing is too hard for Him. If you have loved ones who don't know Jesus Christ, keep praying. Ask big things of God. If he can bring down a whole communist regime, he can answer your prayers too. We have several vi video testimonies of some of these former rebels, which are very powerful, including one about the executioner. If you are interested in hearing some of their testimonies, you can find them also on awr.org or on our YouTube channel. Also, AWR360, a mobile app has this, from terrorist to Adventism. It was first shown back in December 23, just before Christmas. On, and here they are. They're lighting their candles, transferring that light one to another to another. And they've prepared songs. But here they are, surrounding that pool with those lights symbolizing that they are going to spread the good news. And they, they concluded their, their presentation. This was a surprise presentation. They're coming forward to say thank you. And you'll see them hugging former rebels, former army uh, individual. Reconciliation, totally reconciled. Isn't that beautiful? Those are just short clips, but that was wonderful. Look among the nations and watch. Be utterly astounded, for I will work a work in your days which you would not believe, though it were told you. Habakkuk 1.5. May God be praised. Inspiration says this. It pleases and honors God that when we ask great things at his hand, expect great things at his hand, he has promised us great blessings through our Savior, and we cannot dishonor his, his name more than to doubt his love and his willingness to bless us. But maybe you feel unworthy and not ready to be used by God. Well, let me comfort you with these words from the pen of inspiration. It is not the capabilities you now possess or ever will have that will give you success. It is that which the Lord can do for you. We need to have far less confidence in what man can do and more confidence in what God can do for every believing soul. He longs to have you reach after him by faith. He longs to have you expect great things from him. He longs to give you understanding in temporal as well as in spiritual matters. He can sharpen the intellect. He can give you tact and skill. Put your talents into the work. Ask God for wisdom and it will be given you. Isn't that a beautiful promise? Matthew 24, 14 follows this and says, And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached into all the world as a witness to all nations, and then the end will come. Today, as you've heard these stories of ordinary people whom God is using to do extraordinary things, I have a question for you. you uh, how many here today are willing to say by raising their hands? Jesus, I recognize that we live late in this earth's history. I want to be used by you to bring the gospel to precious people that I work with, that are my family members, that are my co-workers, or 
that live on the other side of the world. By raising your hand, you are saying, Jesus, I am yours today. Use me as you see fit so that as many people as possible from our world that you created can be ready for you on that day when you come back. God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we could ask or think. If you will just put yourself in his capable hands, will you join me today? Let's close with the AWR theme song, Airways of Love, and the words will scroll across the screen. Float 
let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, as we go to our homes, if we're dis dis dismissed, may we cherish in our hearts the message that you've given us. And may we safely leave this meeting to serve you as our prayer. In the holy and precious name of Jesus, we ask these things. Amen.